Hey everybody, I got a video here for you today. You might think, gosh, he makes a lot of videos. And actually, after looking into these unfinished pyramids, I, I have a list. I'm not lacking <laughs> subjects to make videos about, but I think there are a lot of questions that need to be asked. And we are going to go down to ancient Abydos and look at something I think is a huge, huge mystery. And I have done a video on this maybe three or four years ago, but with these new eyes to look through. I think this needs to be investigated. And I need to mention this on the weekend. I'm going to be uploading kind of a long video where I go over as many questions and topics as I can, and just kind of an informal chat. So if you want to post any questions in the comments section, go right ahead. But I have started to put together a few clips for that video, and it'll probably be on the weekend. But we are going down to ancient Abydos today, and I think we are looking at something that came before the dynastic Egyptians, and I'll just go over the evidence for that. But this is ancient Abydos. Back it out here. Here's the Osirian. Here's that weird pyramid they call the Pyramid of Amos down here. But we have a huge mystery here, I think. And I never really looked at this uh, in any weird way when I did the video on it, but man, now I'm just, it, this, my intuition is just screaming at me. But this is the entrance to what they say is the tomb of Senroset III, and he actually has a pyramid up in uh, Dashur that I never mentioned in my pyramid list. I spotted just a weird thing, and I said this could be a pyramid, but I never went over it, so I am going to be making a short video on that pyramid. But they credit it to Senroset III, and this is a tomb that they credit to Senroset III. And looking at the things that have been discovered beneath the sand in ancient Egypt, this is one of the most remarkable by far, I think. Now let me just explain this area here. This is a modern thing that was built, I think, about 10 years ago just to cover the entranceway of the descending ramp into what they call the Devil's Punch Bowl, an open pit, and it's been covered up by sand. This here, this is the mountain of Anubis. That's what this is called, and uh, Royal Necropolis Seals identify this mountain as the mountain of Anubis. And we have some very early structures here, including one I might be making a video about where out here, there is uh, First Dynasty Pharaohs, and there also is a tomb here, and it's strangely identified as the horse named the Scorpion King, and it's an actual tomb. And who is the Scorpion King? Well, he is a pre-dynastic ruler on the Turin's King's List and other King's List that Egyptologists say are just mythological figures. Well, there is a tomb out here of a guy they refer to as the Scorpion King. If there is an actual tomb out here, is he mythological? That's well, just a question I just need to ask. Now, here is a close-up of this thing they built a few years ago, protecting the descending ramp. That goes down into something that early explorers called the Devil's Punch Bowl. Was there something similar to the unfinished pyramid pyramids around this at one time well evidence certainly seems to hint it this way but some of the earliest tombs in egyptian history are right around here they're much smaller they're much simpler this thing goes all the way beneath all the way beneath the mountain in one of the most amazing diagrams and pictures coming from below the sand that i've ever seen now here is an article or a paper written by Joseph Wagner and I think he's with the Penn Museum but I thought this was excellent excellent they go over a lot of information but is the attribution to Senroset the third for this tomb accurate well I'm just opening up the question here now here is a diagram here you can see the descending ramp and then horizontal shafts, and what they call a double well shaft chamber, and a 
burial chamber with a hidden sarcophagus that was like they say hidden in a wall and then we have a slightly descending passageway to what they call a curvilinear inner tomb where this is actually curved and this is huge but what makes this so interesting to me and they credit this to senroset by some just some inscriptions on a few things that were left just inside of here and outside in a smaller mortuary temple that was obviously dedicated to whatever this original structure was i think but there is no inscriptions in here there is no inscriptions and it's made with massive granite and quartzite and limestone blocks i think we should take a look in here see what was found now first i just want to mention that uh, there were seals found around here and that's why we know it's called the mountain of anubis here are necropolis seals from the Valley of the Kings. It says, include Anubis as the protective cemetery god in the posture of what we call the Sphinx today. He was the protector of cemeteries and the most ancient important god. And some people still think the Sphinx was a lion. <laughs> and just a brief hieroglyph lesson from these necropolis seals. Of course, we have Anubis. Some glyphs represent letters. Others represent a group of letters. Others represent the actual figure that they seem to represent. This is Anubis. And below him, this is the glyph for DW, and that is mountain or shrine. And this is a determinative. It tells you how to take Anubis into context. So this is Anubis upon his shrine or mountain. And mountain and shrine are really kind of in the same context here. And the determinatives, they tell you how to look at the previous glyph or how to read something in total context. Like if you were to have, um, this is really simplifying it here. And I think I've seen this a few times actually, but where you have the glyph for water. And then the next one is a rabbit. You know, the water is running water. I mean, that is just a very simple way to put it. The determinatives, they tell you how to read the previous glyph. Anubis upon his shrine or mountain. And remember, the temple that we call the Sphinx Temple today, in ancient text, is called the Temple of Tep2F, which comes out to Anubis upon his hill or shrine or mountain. Now here are some pics from the excavation and it says one pharaoh two tombs and there is a peak of his dilapidated pyramid up at Dashur and I'll be making a quick video on that but here is the mountain of Anubis and here are what they call dummy mastabas because they really don't know what they were for and no explanation it seems there was some granite chips and other debris that apparently came from whenever they made this underground structure here at Abydos. And here are just a few of the artifacts that were found in the area. Now here is the beginning of the pics of this place. And it was pretty large. I mean, some of these shafts and pyramids you have to crawl through here. These might be, I don't know, 10, 12 feet high by 10 feet wide. And when they first came in here and tried excavating, they said it was just brutal. It was just brutal in here to get through here and do simple drawings of what was in here. It was so hot. But here you see the ceiling. Now, if this was just a tomb, why would they make the ceiling like this? That's strange. And part of these underground chambers curved and just look at this pick here. These shafts were massive, perfectly smooth blocks making up the inner part of this. And it seems there are niches in the walls, absolutely zero inscriptions. What was this purpose? Was this a tomb? I think this is a great mystery.
Now here's that pick blown up. It's not that clear, but man, they were using some huge, impressive stonework here in a shaft, a curved shaft that was just huge. Now let's just read a little here. It says, Wagner stresses that there is a great deal of excavating left to do, but to this point they've learned a lot about the tomb and its layout. Like other Middle Kingdom tombs, it is uninscribed, but its layout is intriguing. Other Middle Kingdom tombs, it is uninscribed. Now here is a nearby tomb of a pharaoh that was found at Abydos, and this I believe comes from a couple dynasties down the road, but here you can see simple tomb descending stairway into a simple tomb that is inscribed. And here you see the tomb of Senebka. I think this is the ruler, and he comes from uh, maybe a couple hundred years down the line from Senroset. And I think he's in the 15th or 16th dynasty. It's kind of a hazy intermediate period where they don't know much about the pharaohs. But clearly, the tombs, they wanted to be immortalized. Life stories, cartouches, stories of the afterlife are in the pharaoh's tombs. That's pretty clear. In Senro sets, coming from the 12th dynasty, they say, even though his body or nothing of him was ever found here, they say this is his tomb. Should we question this? Absolutely. They were not uninscribed. It says, like other Middle Kingdom tombs, it is uninscribed. That's total BS. Well, let me just read on here. It says, the excavation of Senroset III's tomb has been extremely difficult. As Weagle found out the hard way back in 1902, those corridors and chambers deep beneath the earth are stupefyingly hot, humid, and cake with dust. Wegner related how he and his wife had to bring down a half a dozen changes of clothing every time they went down there because they would be soaked with sweat and coated with dirt. Two aspects of excavation have proved particularly difficult. The first was the initial clearing of the entrance, which was packed full of sand and debris. If you examine the tomb plan from above, you'll see that there are two entrances at the bottom of the Devil's Punch Bowl, a long, sloping, descending passage, and a vertical shaft at the foot of the descending passage. It says, Wegner had hoped to clear the vertical shaft and just use that to enter the tomb, but it didn't work. Every time they dug down to the floor of the shaft, the tons of sand packed into the descending passage behind it would flow down and block their way. It says, in the end, the workers had to clear every last bit of sand from both the shaft and the passage. This was completed in the 2005 season. The other difficulty is that the Abydos tomb of Senroset III was thoroughly and savagely ransacked in antiquity. There was nothing left. How odd. Most of the corridors and chambers were carefully lined with well-cut, perfectly fitted, huge blocks of beautiful limestone and quartzite. In their attempt to look for treasure, the ancient tomb robbers smashed many of these huge stones and pulled them down from the walls and floors. As a result, many of the corridors and chambers are choked with this stone debris, some of which weighs many tons and it takes a great deal of work to clear it. Just how imagine how hard a job it was for tomb builders 3,800 years ago to get all of those big blocks 80 feet down into this tomb. And apparently these people were just sweating like mad, just crawling through here and doing drawings. Yet people sometime in antiquity were bringing massive, huge, many-ton stones down here putting together something that is truly incredible in all of Egypt. Now here is a video I found by Robin Morgan, and it's only been watched 57 times, but I thought this was excellent. It just shows you what's below the ground in kind of a 3D way here. But I'm just going to play a little bit of this and just take note of how secretive this place is and these hidden chambers and hidden passageways that are below here. I think this is very well done. I'm just going to share some of this, but I'll leave the link to the full video below. Seems there was just a trench that was buried with the descending ramp. And here is where those strange, they call them pole roofs. 
that undulating ceiling. Now there are chambers on both sides of this descending passageway. This is what it looks like. And there is a hidden passage in the ceiling. This next passageway, you have to go through up a hidden passageway in the ceiling to get to. This is incredible, and it kind of sniffs at those other really weird underground passageways that I've been showing you. Strange, hidden, concealed passageways in the upper part of this massive block. This is just bizarre. Now descending even further, it curves in total below the ground here. I think it's uh, 120 meters total, but some of these passageways are huge and they are curved. I think this video is very well done. This massive channel way through here with these hidden passages. And there are some other stuff, but here you get an idea of what is below the ground here. What about a sarcophagus? Well, here we have one that is resembling stuff in the Serapium. It's massive. I think I have a pic at the end of the video of this. One small chest, one big chest down there. But that is what this looks like. And once again, I will leave the link for this whole video below. I think it's fascinating. Now, you notice here it says... The enclosure walls were pulled down when Senrusset's underground tomb was finished. There was enclosure walls surrounding this descending ramp. Two dummies mastabas that just had remnants of materials coming out of here. Did the ancients think this place was so sacred that they thought the chips of the limestone and the granite were sacred? Is that why they're put in these dummy mastabas? I have no clue. Now here's a story that Ancient Origins did in this place, and I will leave a link below. But Joseph Wagner, he is associating this to Senro set, and maybe he just, everything he's learned, he just, it can only be a tomb, nothing else fits. But here are some other picks. Here is that one curving, perfectly shaped granite and quartzite blocks here with niches in them. Here's another pick, the mass of rubble. That was in this place and there you could see on that diagram video i did there was huge massive 40 ton 50 ton granite slabs that were just placed in these shaft ways and then people had to cut around them in later years just to excavate in here here's another pick no inscriptions whatsoever now here is what was found at the end they say this is the sarcophagus the senos at the third even though there is not one single inscription, his body or nothing re relating him to this object has ever been found. This looks identical to the massive 150-ton sarcophagus in the Serapium and the other unfinished pyramids I've been showing you. They say this is the tomb of Senroset III, and then that history does not get questioned. I think it should get questioned, obviously, because there's no evidence saying this is the tomb of Senroset III from the 12th dynasty. That is clear. This is the supposed tomb of Senroset III from the 12th dynasty, and I think there are huge questions here. You notice it is right on the very tip of this, what they call the Mountain of Anubis. I will leave some links below. One of those articles links Abydos and the name Abydos and Anubis to inscriptions coming from pre-dynastic times. Why is that? Because a great dog stood out in front of the Giza necropolis guarding that cemetery. Hope you thought this was cool and you all have a very nice day.